want to make a video which is awesome for your school project, vlog, your short film dream, or a simple video gift for your family or loved ones. Well, this is the right place for you because I am going to give you some tips on how to make a video using basic camera techniques. Bro, the intro, and let's go! What's up guys? As I have said, I am gonna give you some tips on how to make a simple video. Of course, since it's only simple, I'm gonna give you the basic camera angles and shots. Yes, you heard it right. We are talking about the basics of camera techniques. Now, when we say basic, we usually denote it as easy, beginning, or somewhat elementary. But look at the br brighter side of it. Basic means the most important thing. There you go. We are really going to talk about the most important and fundamentals of making a simple but very effective video. So let's get it started. Now, before we proceed, um, please do remember that it is not enough to just have a deep understanding of these angles and shots. In fact, you must provide yourselves a story for your content or your video. There's a saying, story comes first. But in different sense, if you master these camera techniques, well, it will really have a great impact and can totally change the meaning of any of your shots. And of course, your whole video. Now, let's start with the basic camera shots. May napansin ka ba sa characters mo? Nakikita ba? Does it fill the frame or baka naman napakalayo na kaya di mo na masyado makita? Yes guys, we call that as the size. Siyempre, we need to consider the size of our frame in relation to our subject so that we can easily know that kind of size ang dapat nating i-consider. Simulan natin sa una. Ang tinatawag na extreme wide shot. Extreme. It's like a very serious matter or having a very great degree. Sa camera shots naman, kapag sinasabing extreme, wide shot, the view is far from the subject. To the point na nga na para hindi na masyado visible, lalo nung lalo na yung mukha ng tao kung tao naman yung subject mo. The point of this shot is to show the subject's surroundings. Yes, yung paligid guys. Sometimes, it is called the establishing shot because the scene gives us the idea of the new scene na pwedeng mag-show si audience where the action will take place. Tingnan natin yung video ni Spider-Man or ni Peter Parker sa movie na Spider-Man Homecoming kung saan may nakita siyang parang sumabog yung parang blue na flame. Then after that, he was trying to use his power, of course, Yung sapot niya, since gagamba siya. Pero, that time, hindi niya nagamit yung sapot niya kasi nga, filled yung sasaputan niya. Eh, wala namang mga puno doon. So, he decided to just run. Run. At tumakbo siya. You know, let's watch this clip. This sucks! Now, have you recognized that it was Spider-Man running in the field? Of course, sinabi ko kanina, di ba? You know, extremely wide, we cannot really recognize the face of the character. Pareho kanina ni Peter Parker. But this shot really helps in establishing the scene kung saan talaga andun si Peter Parker. Now, yung tinatawag natin na wide shot. Yeah, kanina is extreme na nag-show ng character na so far away that they are nearly lost in the frame or obscured by their surroundings. Now, the wide shot shows the character's entire body in frame from 
the head to the toes. This gives the viewer a better sense of the subject's surroundings and of course conveys information that would be lost in close-up. Let's look at the scene of the famous Keanu Reeves film, of course, si John Wick, Chapter 2. If you notice that John Wick is moving through his environment, usually, ang ganitong shots ay magkita sa mga action films, kagaya nga ng John Wick, at marami pang iba. Okay, next, we will be talking about the medium shot, also known as the three-fourth shot, the mid shot, or the waist shot. Now, this medium shot typically shows the subject from the knees, allows the viewer to see the background, yes, the background of the environment and the character's gestures. <laughs> while still being close enough to the capture emotions. Now, itong shot na to emphasizes both the actor and the surroundings. Yun nga, kumagkakaroon ng equal presence sa screen. Now, we use this shot actually para mas lalo nating ma-reveal ng clear yung ating emotion. Lalo na dito sa face. Ganito. While still informing the audience kung ano ang nangyayari sa paligid natin. Pareho na lang ng scene sa Avengers, yung Infinity War, kung saan ayaw lumabas ng bad ass na ho. Yung green, kahit ano pang pilit ni Dr. Bruce Banner. Now, let's take a look at the video and notice of the shot. No, not really, but when do I ever get what I want? That's right. It's been a while. It's gonna be good to have you, buddy. Where's your gun? I don't know. I mean, he really needs a gun, right? Yeah. He's just trying to concentrate, though. Anyway, or that sample short shot, we can see the emotion of Bruce Banner really trying hard to let the Green Hulk come out. Now, we can see it from his face, right? So that's the essence of this shot. We can see the emotion of the character while having the information of what is happening around them. In this case, may mga kalaban from outer space, tapos sabi nga ni Iron Man or ni Tony Stark, kung di ako mag nagkakamali, si Squidward. Di ba? Lakas mo lang mga bikini bottom eh. Just want to share with you the scene of one of my favorite films. They said this is a love story. Why not? Smith? I love the Smiths. Sorry? I said I love the Smiths. You've you have good taste in music. Like the Smiths. Yeah. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. I love them. Oh. You know, I hope to experience that in an elevator or two. The Smiths playing, of course. But I want to sign out with them. Tell them. Sign out. Well, I would love to recommend a film that was, you know, Five Hundred Days of Summer, and. Summer was the name of the lady in the elevator. Check it out, guys. Anyway, so much for Summer Finn. Now, medium close up includes the subject's upper body, usually from waist, where the camera focuses on the actor and the emotion. In the video, it focuses more on the reactions and emotions of the two in the elevators. Now, the idea of this sh shot is that you can easily register the character's <laughs> facial expression and emotion while we retain some of the background. Yeah, yung background dun is room sa loob lang ng elevator. Now, sa sample video ng nga natin is andun lang sila sa loob and then if you're going to compare that sa medium shot, pareho silang nagdi-deal ng focus sa emotion at sa background. But dito sa shot na to, is limited na ang background and the shot that frame the subject from just above the head, ito, 
down to about the midway ng kanilang torso. Usually, ginagamit tong shot na to palagi kasi it is considered as the neutral shot. Yes, guys. Now, we move on to the next shot which is the close-up. Yeah, this is not your ordinary close-up, guys, that you have in your mind. Lalong lalo ng hindi ito Colgate. <laughs> I hope those sentences came out in a purpose. If not, pakala na kayo. Anyway, close-up shot fills the screen with a part of the subject such as person's head or face. The emotions and reactions of the character dominates the scene. The subject becomes the prominent focus of the focus and helps the audience build without being distracted by background interferences what while many close-up shots involve faces some close-up shots focus on important scene details that might add to the exposition of a certain story including a clue foreshadowing a later element but of the, I mean element of plot development or helping to set the mood or tone of a certain film or a video. Also, lahat laman ng movie genres gumagamit ng close-up shots to help develop their stories and share important characters' emotion. Now, here, let us watch a clip from the film Alpha. Yung man. So guys, that was a close-up shot. Yung nasa pinaka introduction niyo ng yeah, nasa una lang ng ano, movie. Now, when you are ready to add a close-up shot to your video, please consider the following. Una, establish a structure. Yes, make a plan and remember that the shot is the emotional play of that you are going to build. Guys, emotional play off to build. Take note of the other aspects like dialogues and scenes that may precede the dramatic close-up. You don't want to spoil this shot, right? Of course. Kalawa. Determine your next shot. Consider the cost and effect. Yes, cost in effect. For example, after your close-up shot of your character crying while in rage. Yes, crying, pero galit. May something. Cut to a medium shot or the other to show what caused the character to cry in rage. Diba? Desi I mean, decide exactly what you want to capture. When will you cut away and what shot you'll cut away to? Ikatlo. Set your close-up limit. Use your close-up shot sparingly. Kahit nang wala namang rule, kaya nga, yeah. Wala naman talagang masyadong rule. Gaano kadami ang dapat o dapat o hindi dapat gamitin ng ganitong klaseng shots. Now, we should maintain their impacts. Yun ang mahalaga. Kapag alam mo yung full shot plan mo, mas magagamit mo ng maganda yung close-up shot moments mo sa video mo. And of course, be consistent. Lahat naman dapat eh. Consistent. Anyway, siguraduhin mong namimaintain mo yung mga elements like the light temperature at weather sa mga shots mo. Baka magawa mo ang shots mo ng magkakaibang oras like yung umaga, at hapon o gabi. So, mag talaga yung mga scene. So, do take care of the continuity of your shots since vital siya sa video mo. So, that is the close-up shot, guys. Very important shot. Now, kanina, we talk about the extreme wide shot kung saan halos di mo na makita yung face ng isang character. Dito naman, sa susunod, sa susunod na shot is kabaliktaran. We call it as 
the extreme close up shot yes guys extreme close up traditionally it is used to allow the viewer to enter the character's intimate space para mas lalong ma-reveal ang certain characteristics at emotions na hindi masyado nakikita sa ibang shots sa pinakasimpleng sabi kapag naka-focus yung camera sa isang parte ng katawan ng isang tao na ito dito kung sa close up focus tayo sa mukha dito mas detalye pa ng mukha naka-focus like sa mata malumuluha o may muta buhok na kulay abo may uban or simply yung wristwatch mo or yung yosi sa kamay ng isang karakter yes guys hindi ibig sabihin ng extreme close up is sa mukha lang nakapokus ang tanga lang pwede naman sa ibang parts ng katawan natin or kahit anong maliit na bagay na magre-reveal ng extreme intimate proximity or details na mga mag emphasize sa importance ng scene since this shot intensifies the feelings of a character and experiences and allow us to feel a connection with him or her. Now, let us watch again the 500 Days of Sun. Actually, in this film, there are two versions of this scene. One is the love scene and the other one is like out of love scene? I chose the latter. Here it is. I hate summer. I hate her crooked teeth. I hate her 1960s haircut. I hate her knobby <laughs> knees. I hate her cockroach-shaped splotch on her neck. I hate the way she smacks her lips before she talks. I hate the way she sounds when she laughs. I hate summer. I hate her crooked teeth. I hate her knobby knees. I hate the way she smacks her lips before she talks. Those are the lines in the clip. Ang sabi ni Tom. May napansin na ba kayo sa mga lines niya? Sana pareho tayo. Ito yung napansin ko. Tom keeps on saying that he hates summer. Pero, describe niya to. Take note of that descriptions. These descriptions are the extreme close-ups, right? Diba? Now you get it. Extreme close-up. Those are the basic camera shots that you may use when you start making your video. But wait, we are not done yet, okay? So I need you to focus on the next details. Kasi we're going to talk about the basic camera angles. Yeah, I hope you're learning in this video. Now, if you do, please consider subscribing to this channel and hit that notification bell icon so you will be updated when the next video comes out. Also, you may share it to your friends, colleagues, or whoever needs this kind of information. Now, let us proceed. This time, we will be dealing with the camera angles. Now, if you have your shots, you should also have your angles. Now, instead of shooting everything from eye level, sanay tayo dyan, yung mga baguan, lalong lalo na, palagi lang eye level. Now, shoot it with different angles para mas makuha mo yung ganda ng lahat ng shots mo. Hindi sa lahat ng oras nasa front mo yung subject, di ba? You can position your camera around your subject. Pwede sa harap, pwede sa likod, kabilang sides, pataas, baba, or pwede mix. Just make sure that they work together. Unahin natin itong sinasabing eye level shot or eye level angle. Now, this refers to when the level of your camera is placed at the same height as the eyes of the characters in your frame. Parang ganito lang ginagawa ko ngayon. This is eye level. Yung camera na gamit ko ngayon, na shoot sa akin ngayon, is eye level. Now, since your goal is to establish a connection with the audience, am I? Am I establishing a connection with you guys? Di ba meron? Now, dapat natin i-consider yung point of view ng audience or para makuha ko kung sa akin yun para makuha ko yung attention nyo now dapat ma-feel that we are actually with the scene observing the actor's face as if we are FC parang feeling close lang ba? Diba? now since parang feeling close na we establish a neutral perspective 
hindi superior, hindi naman inferior. Now, this is how you would shoot an interview scene if you wanted to maintain a sense of objectivity, di ba? Sa mga nag interview ganun palagi. Now, ang goal dito is to let the viewer follow the action without manipulating their emotions. While it is called eye level, it doesn't mean that you will be shooting the character's face. <laughs> Imagine. You can get an eye level shot of an object by maintaining a neutral camera angle. Ito yung isang sample ng eye level sa isa sa mga paboritong director. Of course, this is from Quentin Tarantino's film, yung Django Unchained. Panoorin natin. Thank you for your assistance in creating the opportunity for this appointment. Nonsense. It's my job. So this is the one-eyed Charlie I've heard so much about. Yes. This is Django Freeman. Django, this is Mr. Candy's lawyer, Leonid Mogi. Just call me Leo. Calvin's in the Julius C's room. You all want to follow me? <laughs> That's it. Yun yung eye level na tinatawag. Pantay yung camera sa mata ng mga characters. Now, sunod dito ay yung high angle. Okay? Baka high. Mayroon, sunod is high. Siyempre, pag high is taas. At sunod dyan is the low. So, may eye, may high, may low. Now, sa high at low mismo, malalaman natin ang difference ng dalawa. Let us look at the next scene of that film again. Yung Django Unchained. Tingnan natin. I was raised to be Calvin's lawyer. One could almost say he's a nigga. What did you say? I said... I think he's just being cheeky. Have anything else about Mr. Ken? See the differences? Diba? Yung stairs lang yung ginamit nilang background sa isa sa loob ng bahay. But the angles are different. Now, sa high angles, the characters seem smaller, diba? At the eye level, at doon naman sa low angle, di parang mas lumaki. In a different sense, if we talk about high angles, the camera points down at your subjects. It usually creates a feeling of inferiority or looking down, parang mas makapangyarihan ako kayo po, andun ka sub, yung subject but again, with every other camera angle there are many applications is remember that, hindi ibig sabihin na high angle ka, ay mas mahina or vulnerable yung subject depende pa din sa pagka-portray sa video same rule sa low angle just be cautious on how to apply these two angles Okay. next will be the bird's eye view bird, di ba? nakataas, lumilipad hindi naman pwedeng sa baba. Or, sometimes we call this as the God's eye view since God, yung pinuporte is God is nasa taas ka lagi. Now, itong bird's eye view, yan, tawagin na lang natin itong bird's eye view. Kung saan, yung elevated view of a subject na parang nasa perspective ng isang ibon. Yes, sir. Literal. Perspective ng isang ibon. Imagine mo na lang yung nasa ikaw 100 palapag ka ng isang gusali at dumungaw ka sa bintana at Tingnan mo yung sa pinakababa ng building. Yun yun. Afraid of heights? Hmm. Hindi. Afraid ka lang mahulog sa kanya. Or kung meron kang video using your drone to capture a scenery. Yun yun. Yung sample pa din natin is yung kay Quentin Tarantino. Ito yung another scene sa film. How long have you been associated with Mr. Candy? Oh, Calvin's father and I were about 11 when we went to boarding school together. Calvin's father's father put me through law school. One could only... Yeah. Diba? Bird's eye view. Now, those are the different camera angles. Actually, these angles can be used to really create a story when mixed up. Sa kakaunting oras lang, pwede kang makagawa ng scene gamit ito lahat. Before I forget, we still have the worm's view. Kung may bird, meron tayong worm. Yung bulate. Yes, guys. Ipagpalagay mong isa kang bulate at tumingin ka sa taas or tumingin ka sa isang tao. Ganun yun. Isa kang bulate. 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 Tingnan natin si Spidey. Spidey paso. I told you. You die for that. That was the over-the-shoulder angle in which the shot is taken from behind the shoulder of another character and typically frames the subject in a medium or close shot. 
it is particularly effective in group conversation scenes. Yeah, palagi pag may nag-uusap. And helps establish with characters who are speaking to each other. Usually, ang ginagamit sa dalawang camera para you know, palitan lang ng balitan. In this case, sa clip, they use si Thor, the God of Thunder, use his new hammer, yung kakakuha niya lang, to kill Thanos. Notice that the position of camera is nasa likod ng isang character. Pero naka-face sa audience yung isa. And as you can see, kapag nakikita mo yung face ng isa, yung isa ay shoulder na lang. Kaya tinawag tong OTS or over-the-shoulder angle. You could also use an OTS wide shot to show a character looking out over maybe sa la isang landscape or plane or moving through an action sequence when you don't want to use POV. Now, let us watch this scene from Avengers. Time to go. Go where? I'll tell you on the way. Can you fly one of those jets? I can. Time to go. Go where? I'll tell you on the way. Can you fly one of those jets? I can. We call this as pan and tilt. Yes, panning and tilting. The simplest camera movement is panning or tilt. Yung pan is when you keep the camera in one place and turn it to the side, whether left or right. This is a rotating movement in which the camera's position remains in place. But the direction that it faces changes. It can be used to follow a moving character or to fit more into frame. For example, panning across a landscape to create a sense of place. Now, a tilt is when you turn it up or down. Baba, taas. Yung kanina, yung panning is from left to right or right to left. Ito naman na, tilt is from taas, pababa, pababa, taas. Now, I mean, a slow upwards tilt can be very effective in making a subject appear bigger or more significant while a downwards tilt has the opposite effect. Kabalik tana. Now, if your camera is on a tripod, simply turn the head of the tripod just as you would turn your head to one side to get a new perspective on a scene. Kapag tumay yung subject, you can turn an eye-level shot into a low angle by tilting the camera up as they rise. Itong dalawang to ay good opportunity to experiment with speed. Yes, speed. You can spend an entire minute slowly panning from left to right to show off a room or a landscape. Or you can do a whip pan in which the movement happens so fast that it becomes blur. Now, ito yung paborito kong shot. Palagi. Tinatawag natin na arc shot. Yes, A-R-C shot. Ang very simple definition ng arc shot ay yung shot where the camera circle its subject. Yeah, yung camera circles the subject. Dito, the camera provides the motion. Yung camera yung gumagalaw. Tracking around the subject in at least a semi-circle movement. Kaya may tinawag sa mathematics na ter na term na arc. Na parang segment of a complete circumference. Or sa mga films, halos ginagawa ito para palibutan yung isang subject. Pareho ng mga shots ni Michael Bay. Like yung sa Transformers o yung scene sa The Matrix nung iniilaga ni Keanu Reeves yung mga bala na pinuputok sa kanya. Same sa video na ito, kay Spider-Man, sa Spider-Man Homecoming na hindi niya alam kung saan siya that time. Now, there's the clip from the movie. What is this place? Suit lady, where am I? You're in the most secure facility on the eastern seaboard. The damage controlled deep storage vault. No! Seriously? <laughs> oh. There you go. So that's it, guys. Just remember that story comes first. Kahit anong kakashoot mo ng shots and angles mo. Kung wala kang story at plano eh. Parang wala lang eh. Kaya before taking shots, have it planned out and remember future that you are going to have the basics as your fundamentals. So before I end this video, recap muna natin yung points to remember. Yung basic camera shots, meron tayong extreme wide shot, the wide shot, the medium shot, the medium close-up, 
the close up and the extreme close up. Doon naman tayo sa camera angles, yung eye level, high and low angle, bird's eye view, and the worm's eye view plus the over the shoulder. And of course, the panning, the tilt, and the arc shot. That's it. I hope you learned something from this video, guys. So start making your video. Thank you. And just mabalo sa endogawas.